There is also a forgiveness or indulgence aspect to psychology. If you do something wrong or make a horrific decision, you only have yourself to blame. But if you have a mental illness, it conveniently no longer becomes your fault. It's not your fault you did LSD and ran over the neighbor's dog with your car. You're an addict. You have a mental illness. It's not your fault you're a lazy bum who didn't study and are now flunking out of Pip Johnson's remedial community college for flunkies. No, you suffer from dyslexia and social anxiety disorder and need a government scholarship. It's not your fault you can't teach to save your life. Your students all suffer from ADHD and need to be doped up on Ritalin. And it absolutely is not your fault you didn't stay home to raise your kid, who is now torturing animals during recess, leaving headless squirrels in girls' desks, merely as a detouring hobby before he goes full incel and shoots up his school. Your kid suffers from Asperger's or autism. You are a great parent, who is also brave and courageous for having a mentally impaired son. This indulgence-forgiveness aspect of the psychology industry is where the real money is made, and is the true purpose of the profession. It is also why the psychology industry, no matter how bogus, will never go away. Americans are too prideful to ever admit they were wrong, take responsibility for their actions, and will pay lots of money to protect their egos. They want a guilt-free, responsibility-free life where they can do whatever they want, and if things go wrong, they simply chalk it up to mental illness. But as it always is when it comes to boomers and their deal with the devil contracts, there is a price to pay. And when it comes to psychology boomers, it's believing you're mentally ill when in fact you're not. It's already difficult enough if you have a legitimate mental illness. If you truly are depressed, you truly are contemplating suicide, or you suffer a genuine chemical imbalance in your brain, these are horrible things that really lessen your life. But to fake having a mental illness? Or to lie to yourself about having one? Or to lie to your children that they have one? Isn't that worse than actually having a mental illness? And how much effort and energy do you have to commit over the course of your life to keep that facade up? What does it cost you over a lifetime to fake such a thing just to protect your pride? The problem with the psychology boomers is they're all too eager to accommodate you in this delusion. Not only because they will gladly take your money, but because if you're willing to keep the facade up, they are too, because it's a lifetime stream of income for them. This also means they have no financial incentive to cure you of mental illness because it would mean the well would run dry. They need to indulge you in this delusion forever so they can make money on you forever. And if you're a particularly weak-minded person, you need to keep up the delusion as well. Because, let's be honest, if you ever grew a pair and admitted you didn't have a mental illness and just plain suck, you'd have to suffer a mighty blow to your ego. And so, what most psychological services really boil down to is a long-term, even lifetime, ego protection service you pay for so you don't have to take responsibility for your bad decisions and can protect your precious self-esteem forever. But what's even worse than faking a mental illness is being told you have one when you don't. You don't even have the ego or arrogance to fake a mental illness and are a perfectly mentally healthy individual. But what if people lie to you and tell you you're mentally ill? And what if they do this to you not when you're an adult, but when you're an innocent child? Unfortunately, there is a cadre of boomers who have every incentive to lie to people, specifically children, as it symbiotically benefits them and the psychology boomers. And tragically, this cadre is composed of people who should be the protectors of children, not parasites, teachers and parents. Teachers who can't teach dismiss their inability to teach on the mental illness of their students, and parents who can't parent do the same to their kids. And instead of the psychology boomers taking a stand, having some morals, and telling the teachers to teach and the parents to parent, they are more than happy to have some Benjamins slapped in their hands to bogusly diagnose those kids with a mental disorder those kids don't have. The kid is perfectly fine. But the teacher's ego and the parent's pride are more important than the kid's mental health. And so, they have no problem lying to the kid, telling them they're mentally ill, which no doubt screws up the kid for the rest of his life. If you're already disgusted with the psychology boomers and the symbiotic parent-teacher parasites who feed innocent child victims to them, don't worry, it gets worse. Pharmaceuticals. Because it's already criminal to lie to a child or adult about them having a mental illness when they don't. It's tragic when teachers and parents love themselves more than the kids, so they lie to them about being mentally ill. But it goes into mad Nazi scientists experimenting on human test subjects level when you dope your kid up with mind-altering drugs because you're just too damn lazy to parent or teach. Of course, expecting the pharmaceutical industry to have a conscience is like expecting the banking industry to do the same. The pharmaceutical industry just makes too much damn money on treating legitimate mental illnesses, but a lot more on misdiagnosed, overdiagnosed, and completely bogus ones. And you can even forgive the pharmaceutical industry for making the drugs, as they're not the ones writing the prescriptions. 
They're just the ones banging them out. But the fact that mind-altering drugs were used as a substitute for parenting, teaching, or just raising a generation of children is unforgivable. And the fact that they were so widely used on disorders that likely didn't exist only made a bad situation worse, contributing to the mental suffering of the millennial generation. What is it like living through life thinking you have a mental illness when in fact you don't? Or worse, what's it like developing a genuine mental illness because you were lied to about having one when you didn't? And even worse than that, what's life like when you're taking a psychotropic drug you don't need? And quadruply worse than that is how do you deal with the fact that it was your own teachers, psychologists, and parents who were the ones that planted that knife in your back? There are a lot of reasons to hate the boomers. Psychology boomers are just another large, painful one. <laughs> 